Hey, welcome to the New Balance Podcast. I'm your coach, HTO. And listen, I have a game changer for you on today. It's 2021, and I want you to know that everything that you want to accomplish is right here and right now. But there is a key. None of it's going to happen without coaching or the right coach. When I think about coaching and I think about my life, the reason I am where I am in life is because of the locker rooms and all of the different coaches that I've had along my, along my life. I also think of great movies when I think of coaching. I think of movies like Coach Carter, Woodlawn, The Blind Side, Remember the Titans. These are some of my favorite movies. Anyone that's competed at anything in life, you'll be taken back when you watch these movies because they touch you in a place of personal battle and struggle, which is just, just personal experiences in life. When you look at these movies, they remind me of my experiences when I just played the game and when I coached the game. A lot of these have similar storylines. What do I mean by that? You can find a person or a team that was struggling. They were trying to be successful. But then all of a sudden, you see them transform into a winner through the efforts of a coach and or a mentor. By the end of the movie, you see this hard-fought battle that brings clarity to the individual and to the team on what? On the value and the influence of their coach. These movies show us this. The main character's victory, victory it ultimately depended upon how coachable they were. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever thought about how coachable you are? If we could give a definition to, definition to coachable, I would say it this way. Being coachable is being capable of being easily taught and trained to do something better. All my life, I've never met anyone who didn't wish they were better at something. I'll say it this way. I've never met someone who was willing to be coached who didn't get better and see and recognize the changes in their lives. So what does that lend to? It lends to coaching. It lends to being coached or being coachable. Now, if we're going to be coachable, we don't have to make up a plan. There's a master plan, a master playbook. And we see in God's word, he gives us two valuable coaching resources to ensure our success. That's a win-win just in that. You, got a, you have a playbook that's going to ensure your success. We have to follow it. So I look at it in two ways. The first way, I look at it this way. We have the Bible to guide and train us. When you look at just that, that's coaching. 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says it this way. All scripture is God-breathed and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, watch this, and training, which is coaching, in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That's every area of life. This is so important when you submit to the coaching. And listen to me. When you submit, you won't think it's strange when you're being stretched beyond measure. Because when you're coachable, trust me, you're going to be stretched beyond measure. And the second thing I would say would be this. God provides relationships or other coaches to guarantee we make the progress. The Bible teaches us that we have an obligation to one another. The scripture says it this way, see to it that nothing gets in the way of each other's faith. In that regard, we're all either coaches or we're all being coached. Hebrews 3, 12 and 13 says it like this. See to it, brothers and sisters, that none of you have a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But here it is. Encourage one another daily as long as as it is called today. And since it's today, listen, I'm going to give you the encouragement that you came here looking for. So if we want to fulfill God's vision of becoming the best version of ourselves, man, we have to be coachable. It doesn't matter what, what level of life you live in, what your situations, we all need to be coachable. So right now, I want to talk about three obstacles. Um, that everyone must overcome in order to be coachable. The first obstacle I would like to talk about would be fear of failure, of hard work. The second one, over 
inflated opinion of self. And the third one would be the willingness to admit errors in unbelief. Let's break these three down. The first one, fear of hard work. Fear of hard work is part of coaching. It's to push an individual or a team or an organization beyond their comfort levels to help them become all that they can be to achieve God's vision for what we can become or will have to become or turn into or transform to is going to require hard work. And God is not afraid to push us out of our comfort zone. We see this throughout scripture. Now, unfortunately, the fear of hard work, it can make us avoid, dismiss, and marginalize coaching in our lives. We have to guard against that. If we don't guard against it, it's going to do this. It's going to manifest itself as not putting in the work required to achieve the results that are possible. Now, how is God pushing us outside of our comfort zone? I'll say it to you this way. God is not going to do anything for us that we can do for ourselves. So we have to put the work in. We have to put the effort in. And when we do that, we can see the results that we desire. What would your attitude and outlook be if you were being trained by your favorite trainer? No matter what area of life it is, if you could pick that person to motivate you, to point you in the right direction, give you the information, what would that attitude look like? Whatever that attitude is, we need to give God and the coaches he places in our life that same energy or better. The attitude definitely is going to dictate our altitude, right? So we have to do it. So the second thing I want to talk about is an overinflated opinion of self. Wow. The scripture is full of this, and we have to pay attention to it. See, nothing is more frustrating than watching someone who is clearly struggling or ineffective act like he or she knows what they're doing. This drives parents crazy. It drives husbands and wives crazy. It drives coaches crazy. It is equally difficult to watch someone try to take more than they have been trained to handle. Both of these end up in the same place. What place is that? Defeated. Being defeated is a discouraging and a damages and it damages our faith. Listen, I'm telling you from personal experiences. It's humbling to admit that you need help or more training or more coaching. It's amazing how willing we are to live in complete denial of our weaknesses and failures rather than simply admit that, hey, I need a coach. I need to be coached. Proverbs 12 and 15 says it like this. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. I want you to think about that. What is your listening skills? What is your capacity for listening? And the third thing, the third obstacle that I want to talk about would be unwilling to admit unbelief. There's a story in the Bible in Mark 9, 23 and 24, and it, it reads this way. It, it goes, if you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. And then it said, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. I love this scripture and this story because of the honesty that we see in the father's response. This scripture is about a father needing help for his son while struggling to believe his son can change. Belief is an important component to coachability. Can we be honest like this father? If we need the help, he says, help me in my unbelief. Unbelieving people can agree with the coach but fail to execute the coach's direction. In my life, for so long, hear me when I say this, in my life for so long, my focus was on what was happening to me and not on what God is capable of doing. When our belief is in God, we believe change is possible because God has the power to create something out of nothing. And when you look at all of these movies, remember the Titan, Woodlawn, uh, Coach Carter, that's what we saw. I want to ask you a couple of questions. Have you felt the pain of life passing you by for an extended time? 
Have you felt stagnant in growth or growing? Is it difficult to remember the last time you sought direction or help in an area of your life? Wait a minute, wait. I mean, I'll say this one. This is my favorite. Are you a couch coach that talked and criticized the X's and O's of everyone else's execution in life and fails to see his or her own? If so, these are signs you are not coachable. Coaching is God's pathway to becoming the best version of who you were meant to be. I want you to do something for me. Ask yourself the question, am I coachable? And if you really want to change, there's five things that I want to leave you with, or five things I'm going to challenge you to do. The first thing that I'm going to challenge you to do is this. Tell yourself the truth about how hard you are willing to work. You just have to be honest. Just be honest. Just be honest. Just be honest with who? Yourself. Second thing I want you to do, identify three people that have strengths in areas you want to grow in and reach out to them and ask them for help. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Reach out. The third thing I want you to do, ask three friends how coachable you are. I want you to really look in the mirror with this and be honest. The fourth thing I want you to do is very, very important. I want you to pray about it. And then I want you to do a study on belief and identify the areas you are unbelieving and struggling in, right? That's so critical. It starts with you. And the last thing I want you to do, make a decision to change your attitude about being coached and get ready to enjoy the victories that will soon be on their way. I'll leave you with this. Don't allow your feelings, past failures, and letdowns deter you, deter you from your brand new life. You are not alone. Together, we're going to make it. Proverbs 27 and 17 says that iron sharpened iron. So one person sharpened another. Listen, here at the New Balance Podcast, we're here with you. We're walking this with you. And I want to leave you with this, as we always do. Remember... It's strength for today, sustenance for tomorrow. And no matter where you find yourself in life, there's always room for a new balance. It's your boy, H2O. Peace. I'll see you next week.